In previous video, um, we have derived from a heuristic point of view how do we approach a infinitely often jumped process uh, through a discrete markup chain to a continuous time markup chain. Then we uh, scale this markup cha chain to have jumped infinitely often. And now we uh, formally define what is called a standard Brownian motion. It satisfies uh, three major properties. The first one is uh, uh, evaluate as zero, it must be zero. Um, by the way, um, this w of t, um, its variable is uh, time, which is greater than zero, and it's a continuous variable. The second one is uh, a stationary and uh, independent uh, increment. In that, we have derived uh, the following. It's uh, W T minus W S uh, for T is greater than S is of a normal distribution with mean zero and variance t minus s, and as well as uh, w t minus w s is independent of all the past values, including s. All right, and the last one. Uh, is uh, so here I'll um, write down a term that's uh, almost every trajectory of uh, W is continuous. Okay, so uh, I'm saying almost every is because um, it only holds in the probability one sense. So essentially it is uh, the limit, of the, actually it's the right limit. Um, plus of wt plus h subtract wt is zero with uh, probability one. This limit is zero with probability one. Okay. And uh, um, so now we will uh, learn uh, several interesting uh, property of uh, the Brown standard Brownian motion. Um, let's consider its probability density function. So we assume W of S uh, is X, okay? And then we're curious of uh, what is uh, W of T about and for a T that's greater than S. For Brownian motion, uh, the common trick we use in analyzing Brownian motion is we always rewrite um, a time, for example, this W of t, as the sum of a previous time plus their difference. Okay. For example, this one we know it's x; it's deterministic. This is already like a given, okay? It's deterministic, it's non-random. And this one, we know that it's a normal random variable with uh, mean zero and variance uh, t minus s. As a result, uh, w of t is then a random variable, which is normal. By the way, x is deterministic. As, as a result, its mean becomes x and variance is unchanged, which is t minus s. 
okay and uh, uh, this is to say that so as a result probability of given ws is x and uh, um, let's say um, w of t is less than or equal to a so for some a constant can be then computed by a probability density function and this density function I'm going to rewrite it using a notation which is phi of t minus s and the second variable is uh, y minus x and we integrate it uh, against the y and where the phi of uh, t and z is defined by 1 over square root of 2 pi t exponential function e raised to the z square divided by um, 2 t to the power and this function is nothing but uh, this function right here is a PDF of uh, you guys might already uh, seen this it's a PDF of um, normal random variable with zero mean and uh, variance t which was original um, the uh, which is also the PDF of uh, w of t okay so and then we'll continue to explore uh, this uh, trick for example if we want to compute of the expectation of w s times w of t for some uh, s less than t um, we use the trick again we rewrite um, this w of t as w of s plus w of t subtract w plus s okay. and now we can split the two terms the first one becomes w s squared the second one is e of w s times w t minus w s okay and now we use independent increment so this one and this one are independent as a result um, and by the way because they are independent so now it becomes the expectation of this guy uh, multiply with the expectation of this guy but this one is a normal distribution this one is normal distribution zero mean and the variance t minus s as a result its expectation is zero so the second term is zero it's only the first term which is uh, this guy square and this is nothing but and we know that w of s is of a normal distribution zero uh, with variance s as a result this one is nothing but the variance of w of s and it's just s okay so now let's uh, look back at this expression um, this is a, a multiplication of uh, w of s and w of t for the same Brownian motion uh, for a time s minus t and similarly we can derive a formula for t minus s so in general we have this formula which is the expectation of the product of this Brownian motion at two different times is nothing but uh, the minimum of uh, these two times and now let's uh, compute even more using this trick so another example would be 
uh, let's try to compute the expectation of, let's say, uh, w square at t equals 5 uh, given w evaluated at 3 is 4. Okay. And now we use this uh, trick again. We rewrite, keep this in mind. Uh, this is like our s, so this is like our w of s. This is like our w of t for t is greater than s. And the trick we use is always we rewrite um, w of t as um, w of s, which is w of 3 plus w of 5 subtract w of 3. square given w3 is 4. What happens is uh, we know that w3 is 4 as a result this is 4 and we know that this is a normal random variable with mean 0 and uh, uh, variance 2. So the expectation of, uh, of this conditional distribution if we plug in uh, this 4 right here, it becomes simply the unconditional one, which is 4 plus, and we denote the normal random variable of this guy uh, as, let's say, uh, z. It's simply the expectation of this, and now we simplify. This is just a z squared plus 8z plus 16, and by the linearity of expectation, this is just a uh, um, expectation of z square um, plus 8 times expectation of z plus, uh, and 16 here is non-random, so expectation is just a 16. So as a result, uh, we have this is because the mean is zero, so this one is nothing but the variance of z. So as a result, we have this is 8 plus 0 plus 16. Okay. More example. So uh, suppose we would like to find some uh, conditional distribution of, uh, let's say, um, we want to find what is uh, w of uh, t that's greater than a, but not the uh, absolute one, but the conditional one, uh, similar to this. And uh, how do we do that? Is we can make use of the standard normal random variable. So instead of relying on integrating um, the f function, and uh, um, we could simply do the following. We know that um, W of T, okay, is W of S plus uh, W of T minus W of S. So, what happens is, this is the same thing as if we let this guy to be a C, then C is of normal distribution uh, mean zero and variance t minus s. Okay, so as a result, uh, this becomes the probability of uh, because w of s is x, so this is x. Um, plus C is greater than A, okay? Um, and now, this is the same thing as um, probability of C that's greater than A minus X. And keep this in mind, um, A and X are both uh, deterministic, are just numbers, and only this guy is random. And we also know that 
um, this Cassis satisfies the normal distribution with mean zero and uh, variance t minus s. As a result, we can normalize um, this Cassis by square root of uh, its variance, which is Cassis divided by square root of t minus s is greater than a minus s x and uh, divided by square root of uh, t minus s. And then we can use our standard uh, table, which is, so if, um, let's say, the standard table we have, the area under um, the density function up till this a as uh, phi of a, then the quantity of interest here is nothing but uh, 1 minus the probability of uh, this guy, which is a standard normal distribution now. So, uh, so this one is a uh, standard normal now. And uh, um, so this is capital 1 minus capital phi of a minus x divided by uh, square root of uh, t minus s. Okay.